So we're here in Hong Kong. All right. Here we have an awesome device booting up right here in Hong Kong. Hi. Hi there, Nicholas. How are you? So what are you doing over here in Asia? Well, there's a couple of things. We're at the uh, mobile electronics uh, show at the uh, Asia World Expo uh, in Hong Kong, um, looking at you know what kind of nice accessories we can uh, conjure up for the uh, for the Cosmo and the Gemini. Because there's lots of potential accessories people want to have. Well, I think you know there's some new there's some new uh, things. So we're we're looking at what kind of uh, quality accessories we can provide. Of course, you know the Cosmo is has an outside screen. So what we're looking at obviously is uh, to make the case now for the 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 the, the, the sleeve for the the unit, but also other peripherals, maybe a pen uh, if we're having a new case and and, and so on. So Let's just looking out, out for. I'm going to turn off my my light just for a second. Uh, can we see the the keyboard? So the keyboard, okay. So now this is the keyboard, and now I'm going to turn on the backlight so you can see the backlight. Are you are you recording this yeah. so you can see? So I'm turning on the backlight. I don't know how it looks to you now. It looks awesome. Yeah. So basically, we're very pleased with the keyboard there. Essentially, the backlight on the keyboard there are five. There are five um, five different settings to the light, so you can go lower down like this. You can just go like this to no light, and then you can switch on the light, and this is the maximum light. So nice. actually, it's it's quite it's quite uh, it's quite light. Um, it's quite bright, and actually at night you don't really want to even use the full light intensity. You might want to use one of the lower settings as well. So it's nice. So so. I this has become is becoming even more suitable for productivity. Yes, I think you know on flights where the light is turned off and on uh, you know in the in, at night when it's dark uh, or any any kind of dark space, it's really really great to use now. It's really fantastic. So uh, it's it's productivity in the dark as well as sort of productivity in the light. So so um, this is the Japanese keyboard right here. What's yes. happening? So the, the Japan, you said the so beginning what's, first. So what's happening? I mean, maybe just a quick update on the on the shipment. So basically, we're making now the first run. We're making uh, four thousand units. Uh, out of those four thousand units, probably about three thousand two hundred are going to backers uh, on the on our Indiegogo campaign. Uh, the people that have been loyal to Planet and uh, i've been waiting for a little while now so we started the campaign in november 2000 and uh 2018 and uh, we will have the phone out completely to everybody before the before 12 months but um people have been waiting and people are very eager to get their device and um what we will do is uh, essentially, we've produced four, three different sets of PCBs. So we have the Japanese PCB, which has um, a very good frequency set LTE bands for the uh, Japanese Softbank, market. SoftBank, NTT, Docomo. SoftBank, NTT, uh, Docomo, KDDI. Um, so really, kind of covering the the, the major networks and the uh, and the MVNOs. They have a little bit special networks over there. Yes, but. Also, we really try to cover so that they're really getting good coverage also in rural areas as well as in the cities. And, you know, we're really trying to major on all the Japanese bands. So it will still be quite good to travel with. So it's not just Japan. It's a worldwide modem plus a very good frequency set for Japan. Then our standard frequency set is basically um, meant for very good coverage inside Europe and the USA. And there's a version, uh, a special, so there's a version which covers uh, the major bands in Europe and also the US bands, including CDMA, uh, and also including Band 71, which is a T Mobile USA band that they purchased when they bought Metro PCS, which is 600 megahertz. But essentially, it will work on all the US networks. But then we have a special Verizon edition, which has all the frequencies apart from. Band 71, which is T one of T-Mobile's bands, but it has band 13, 
which is 1200 megahertz, which is the uh, one of the bands that's uh, very popular that uh, that Verizon are using inside the U.S. Right. So, um, so basically, there are three different PCBs, and the way we're doing the production: first, we're doing the Japanese production. Uh, we've already sent out units to Japan. We're completing that. Uh, and then uh, we'll be sending out the Europe and the USA, what we call USA 1 version. And then that's, that's a large number of units. And then the final set, which is a few hundred units, will be going to Verizon customers, the Verizon edition. So we hope to complete all the production by the end of this month and to ship out the units uh, latest in the first week of November. But basically, we will be shipping some more units uh, end of this month. Don't forget, this is all very quick because today is the 21st, and we will be uh, we will be essentially shipping out the units in the next week and the week after that, and that's it. So uh, all the units should be shipped by then for the Indiegogo fans. Right? That's why so, you're on your way to Shenzhen right now. So uh, uh, definitely on my way to Shenzhen to uh, inspect the new uh, the new leather wallet. Uh, and also to uh, to look at how the uh, production, the packaging, and everything else is, because we're really kind of midway in that process at the moment. So, it's really cool to see your secondary display. So, how do you implement this? So, this is a second uh, processor that's driving a secondary display. So, apart from the big display, we have this two-inch display on the front of the Cosmo. So, here uh, you see the main things, like you see your notifications. So you can easily like go to the notification and see what's uh, actually it, happened. It just pulls all notifications from Android. It, it pulls all the notifications from Android. Um, and also it pulls their actions. So for example, if you get a notification from WhatsApp, you can actually answer a call if it's a WhatsApp call notification without opening the unit. Um, as well as that, uh, of course, you can, you know, there are other notifications. This one says low. Is it part of the API of... Uh of the Android system, that so, it's possible to respond to notifications. So we've uh, obviously we're capturing those notifications. You, you can capture them in the, inside the operating system, and we're basically sending them to the screen with directions. And then, of course, when there's an action sent back, we kind of try to uh, then action the, the 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 commands that the notification held within the uh, notification message. Because you have a whole different system running this this second display. Yes, so the, it's the a second chipset. So the second display is basically an STM32 chipset with a with a two inch screen, which is 240 pixels by 536. And then here we also have a, a toggle switch. So you have a toggle, so you can make a call and stop a call. And also in the middle of that, there's a, a touch screen sensor which you can unlock a call with. So I'll I'll just show you again. Now the phone is locked. I've got this button here, yeah. which I can lock the phone with. And now if I, if I press the fingerprint sensor in the middle, it will unlock the phone. So that's quite a nice feature. It's too cool. And then on the front, so you've got your notifications here. On the front, uh, you'll see you've got the phone application, the, photo, the, the, the camera, photo camera, the video camera, the so music player, uh, 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 an audio recorder, voice recorder. Um, and also some settings and then a flashlight as well dialing okay so it's very simple nice uh, so you don't need to open it up every time no you don't need to open it up at, at all for making calls or answering calls like nothing at all yeah and then you've got some other nice features so if we go into the phone app uh, let's go into the phone app so there and then we can go and into the contacts and then as well we got a short menu for uh, selecting uh, a particular letter or uh, also as well as that um, you know we can also make dial uh, numbers from so if I go into the phone app again and I'll go into the dialer I can actually dial a number so nice. you know you can dial as well so you can just dial a number normally. And like this is a like, nice little OLED, not too much power consumption on this one, right? Yes, so it's a low power AMOLED screen. Uh, it's AMOLED screen, as well as that, um, the processors are separate, so you can actually uh, close this one down and it just switch it off. Of course, if a notifi notification comes, it will pop up again. Uh, but also you can switch it off completely. So if I go into the, uh, into the system, in the settings, you have the cover display option. So basically you can switch it off 
completely and then if I go to the outside then you see the screen is no longer operating right but if I then uh, switch it back on in the settings so I'm gonna switch it back on in the settings like this okay then uh, the screen is back on so also when we open and close the unit uh, we can open and close then you'll get the logo um, for a while for a few seconds uh, and then it will go dark but also if we're playing let's say music so I'm gonna start something on uh, on the music player so now I'm playing some music so which app are you using? so this uh, I'm actually using uh, Apple Music here Apple Music? yes so okay. if I'm using that now I can close the unit and I can actually see that now on the front screen skip the next and I can skip to the next track nice and stop it too you can stop you can pause you can go to the next track and also you can change music player so let's say we want to change music player we can change music player and go into another player that's on the system either spotify or um something else of course there's a volume control as well how do you set which music players are there so there's a list of players that would be supported on this and uh, we're basically uh we're basically then uh, utilizing that list and we'll be updating that list as well so there's things like spotify deezer uh apple music um uh, soundcloud uh, so the, ma the major apps so let's say there. you click on the on one of the other ones now let's go to spotify for example from here so I can try to go to Spotify from here. So I'll go to Spotify. So now it's Spotify. And you open it on, on if you open it there. It's your Spotify. Yeah, so it's this is like from the notification kind of area kind of thing, Correct. right? Yes. Because the, there's a, there's this function in Android where you can have notifications from your lock screen. Is, it, is this what that's, you're doing? That's right, yes. So you're taking all the notifications, we're taking them, of course, the, the media ones, the music ones, we're actually putting into the player. So if the music is playing and you close the unit, you'll, you'll continue seeing the player. Uh, of course, when there's a new notification like this now, you'll see there's an email that's arrived. So you'll see this notification flash for a while. How much can you do there? What uh, is the STM32 and this OLED display? How much is possible? What so how much will happen with we this? We try to optimize the interface here, and uh, you know, to so that so that this uh, <coughs> is at least sort of giving us the the major functions. So as I said, the camera functions, it's the recorder like a function. Watch. Yeah, it's, it's you can imagine it like a smartwatch on the back um, of your phone. And also, but there are some controls also like uh, flight mode, like hotspot. Um, mobile data, Wi-Fi, uh, location, Bluetooth. Uh, so, so you have those. Um, Not too much risk that things will trigger in your pocket. You can see here. Well, you can lock it. So you can lock it with the top button. So you're locking it with this button, and then you know everything is locked. So basically, um, as soon as you press this button, you stop all the calls and you lock the unit. So that's kind of one option. And then of course you can unlock it with your fingerprint. And if you're playing music, you lock, then it's not going to change track or something in your pocket. Uh, no, it's not. But there are two buttons. To, you're basically this button or the stop button will um, will bring the screen back. So I can put the screen to sleep and then I'll bring the, the screen back by pressing either the right hand button or the uh, top button. So if, let's open it up again. And uh, so how does it compare with the gym? I was so impressed. Uh, I used the Jimmy PDA for, for nine months as my main phone. How is the... Uh, this is an upgrade, significant upgrade also of the CPU, right? Yeah, I heard that your phone had a little bit of an issue with uh, some uh, water damage. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah so this, uh, this one basically, uh, the, the, the big thing is obviously the backlit keyboard. It's got twice as much flash. It's got six gigabytes of RAM as opposed to four on the Gemini. One to eight gigabytes of flash as opposed to 64. It has uh, two processors, so it has the octa-core P70 processor from MediaTek, and it has the, the, the other processor, which is the STM32, to drive the outside screen. And that P70, is, <coughs> uh, is it more or less kind of like a doubling or something in the performance? Uh, P70 is, I would say, probably about 30 to 40% more uh, in terms of speed. It's very good speed, so in terms of, uh, you know, scrolling and things, it's extremely fast and uh so that's really good and um uh so so, so it's, it's pretty good on on, it's on, totally on the android 9 now it's all android 9 it's a gms 
Um, so yes, uh, and then the, the the other the other part in terms of the power is that we've also added a second physical SIM slot, so that it now has two physical SIM slots, and the second SIM slot is multiplexed together with the eSIM chip. So we still have the eSIM chip, but you can choose either to use two physical SIM slots or one uh, SIM slot, physical SIM slot, and the eSIM chip. But you can use them both for data at the same time, no? No, you have to choose which one of the two physical SIM slots is used for data. It would but be cool if there was a way to bond two SIM cards and get it will be double very bandwidth. Cool. It would be very cool possible, because right? we do have dual 4G modems, so you would get like a 4.5G kind of yeah, but operation, but that's not really supported under I think dual Android 4G 9. should be called 8G. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 4 plus 4 is 8, right? Yeah. yeah very so, good. This, uh, this arithmetic is catching on, but, yes. Uh, but physically, it could, in theory, support both? Or it's locked the to this no, one? No, the modems, the modems do actually, uh, they're dual modems. So, in theory, the chip could support that, yes. But Potentially. It's practice, just for a future kind of thing. In practice, you have to choose um, which uh, modem is used for mobile data. Because there's always something I, I kind of wish that there was some kind of way that I could stream out live stream through bonded to dual uh, LTE to get this stable 1080p or even 4K stream. But that's a, that's a, not a kind of thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a good thing. So how do you lock and unlock it? Yeah, so basically several ways. So one is, like, one is uh, we use the fingerprint uh, from Android. So we can also just unlock like this and basically you unlock and, and that's great if you're using fingerprint. But you can also use things like pin or uh, or pattern so here's a pattern unlock so we'll go we'll press the pattern and then we'll draw the pattern and this is and exactly then we'll like unlock the pattern so this pattern are the, android this is the same standard like android right so then of course if you want to shut down the phone or reboot then you've got an option here and you can say okay i want to shut down from here and you press and then you can say reboot or shut power off and let's say we do reboot and then you confirm to in the other place and then basically it will then be shutting down the device and this is your nice so this is a little animation, animation. that we kind of created yeah for the boot and uh, of course the uh, it will now restart so it's going to power up again and um, we have a little message saying hello I'm Cosmo when we start and then it starts up the phone starts powering up the phone it's really nice so that's kind of uh, the basic, the basic uh, operational on, the, on, on there. Yeah. So let's say you're booting up right now. How would you unlock the first time? Can you do it by fingerprint? So the first time, time you, no, the first time you need to actually go inside the Android. Yeah. And for the first time you need to actually draw your pattern. That's what on Android, Android says is required, Yeah, this right? is kind of required. So basically this is... I don't your, like to start by fingers. No, and then essentially it will continue then uh, booting on the main screen. And, and um, let's say uh, the, the m maybe one of the most usual cases is that you start on that side, on, on the front, front side, and then you can have your finger just on the back. Yeah, so I'll show you that as well. So basically, uh, if we look at the, this, uh, this way, so um, let, me, let, me, let me show you this. So basically now we've, the screen is locked on the inside, yeah. okay? And now I can just touch with the fingerprint on the back and it will just start the uh, Android. Nice. Fully, so they're just so it triggers. I them. mean, there's like function by touching. Is yes. You don't need to push the power button or anything like that because Correct. before you need to go over here. Yes, you don't need to do that. You don't need to press that no, one. No, you don't need to do that. Right. So this is a again. This button. is like a notification. Now, also some nice things about language changes. So I can show you in the language changes. If we change the language, yeah. uh, let's say we go here and we change the language in the keyboard. So we'll do the keyboard. Uh, keyboard. We'll change the language, uh, configure, and we'll, let's say we'll choose Japanese, and then we'll choose our Japanese keyboard, and now we'll close the unit. See, the interface is now in Japanese. Oh. So basically, so the screen is kind of trying to do and trying to be very close to Android, so all the, all the UI is now in, uh, in Japanese. How do you do that? On that, do you develop the whole API for this area too? Yes. Yeah, so Are there going to so be ways to integrate even more and more yeah, stuff? So there's ways on the API. There are ways to basically keep the screen independent of the operating system on the main processor. So if we're running Linux, like uh, if we're running Debian Linux or Sailfish, we can still utilize the API that we're using for the outside screen, because the outside screen is using an operating system called FreeRTOS. 
And on top of free hardware, there's a library that we use called Sager, uh, something called EMWin from Sager. And then uh, on top of that is our UI for the for the uh, what we call for the cover display. We call it the Kodi, the cover display. So, and this fully compatible with all kinds of Linux, whatever people want to do in the future. Well. Uh, we'll open up the API so that people can use it. So it's not uh, so if uh, the Linux uh, community uh, wants to use it, uh, they can use it because the, it, it's a very nice way of uh, actually interfacing with the phone without opening the the Cosmo. Because Linux is famous for not really having phone UIs that much, except for Sailfish. Yeah, so there's Sailfish, and there was a little bit of Ubuntu touch at one point. Um, uh, today, Sailfish, uh, and basically this will allow a kind of very simple UI to be implemented. Actually, the, phone calling actually the UI doesn't need to be implemented, but the, 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 only the API needs to really be implemented because the UI is already implemented. Yeah. So maybe that, maybe that will help. Or something. Yeah, so all, all of the music player, the notifications, the, 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 even the camera, you know, the, essentially, but the key one to start with would be probably the phone, the phone, uh, the phone dialer because that's kind of, and the incoming call handler, because those are kind of very important, right? So... Uh, and that would just work just like that, or it needs to be done a bunch of stuff in Linux with it to work? Of course there's a bunch of stuff in Linux, but nothing needs to be done on the on the cover display, or, or hopefully very little, right? So, um, so that's kind of where... How where much support do you think there's going to be for Linux this time around? So, you know, there are people actively working on getting uh, the multi-boot, uh, multi-boot, so I've seen some Cosmos with three or four booting partitions, which is kind of nice in inside the, the company. Uh, but also, uh, it's uh, it's we're getting we're getting somewhere with Linux. We're you know the the key thing is to get Linux to boot and to get the graphical UI to work, and we're not quite there yet, but we'll get there. So aren't you the most advanced Linux on, on MediaTek in the world? Uh, we've got a few interesting things, so possibly the most advanced MediaTek on Linux, also possibly the best eSIM management on Linux. Those are kind of maybe in terms of media, on, on sorry, on MediaTek, uh, on the eSIM management. So eSIM management and Linux on MediaTek were probably kind of uh, leading leading the way there. Can, how is it going with MediaTek? Because it's really probably very interesting partnership you have going on there, yeah, right? I think it's it's uh, it's exciting. You know, I'm very excited to hear some first rumors about the 5G, and very excited to see any system on chip that comes out with with the 5G. So obviously, very excited about that. We're very happy with this processor. We're very happy with Android 9. Uh, so, um, so far so good and also, you know, the frequency set on the Cosmo is tremendous in terms of, you know, we've been testing in the States, we've been testing on Verizon, on uh, T-Mobile, on AT&T and really the performance is, uh, you know, really, really great, you know, which is, which is what, uh, you know, for example, Band 71 was not even supported on chips like X27, but it's now supported on chips like P60, P70. So the Helio range, so the, the P range. So we're very, very pleased that the modems are supporting more of the US frequencies. And, uh, and of course, we've reflected that in our filter design so that we can capture those frequencies as well. It's one of the things that the uh, High Silicon Kirin or the Qualcomm or the Samsung were more or less having more international kind of modems before, but MediaTek is on par now, especially if you choose while you're making the different versions. You get so, so, full coverage of what people need. Yeah, so I think, you know, now they really sort of MediaTek's really caught up with, you know, having dual 4G, uh, really caught up with, with Qualcomm on many on many levels. So, you know, dual 4G uh, and, and, and uh, really great performance, good power, good power performance as well. Um, now, on the... On the 5G, you know, when we when we see something, I hope that MediaTek will be, uh, and I believe they will be a much stronger follower than on 4G. Uh, they'll be much more uh, aggressive, I think, and and that's uh, that's uh, that's my hope. But so. also, you implement a new antenna s s style. Yes, yeah, so you get stronger obvi signal. Obviously, there's MIMO. On, there's there's diversity antenna. So there's MIMO antenna. So there's three antennas on the on the Cosmo as opposed to two antennas on the Gemini. Um, there's also an NFC circuit. So uh, yeah, there are, there are a lot of differences. There are a lot of uh, modifications. I didn't mention at all 
the 24 megapixel camera, which, you know, we, 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 we're really very pleased. So, so how do you take a picture? Without even opening it up and stuff, you can, well, right? Well, you, you, can, you can take a picture from the inside. So, of course, I'm now in Japanese, uh, but I will take a picture. So you can go here and you can take a picture. So here we're, we've got a picture. And that's going to go, you know, that's a 24 megapixel picture. So you can really zoom in quite far. Nice quality. And still have some pretty good quality. Uh, yeah, it's a very nice camera. And then on the outside, you can go into the menu and you can select a, a picture. So now you're going to see your camera. And, you know, nice. I can take a photo there. Nice. And also I can take a photo with, you can set settings like flash or resolution. Um, so and actually this is, a, this is photo. So yeah, we can set the flash mode and now I can shoot with flash I think this is the flash one sorry this one I'm in Japanese right now so yeah. and you can set different resolutions as well I on think the I'm, the battery is too low for the flash but yeah, yeah but this will give but you it, some it's basically pulling over the the image information from the camera app over yeah, to the back side so it will be a little bit slower but the video recording will be very good it's so fully, fully fully smooth video and yes, picture and everything yes, yes and also you know things like rotation so if you're rotating so here it's like this and now we're going to rotate so the rotation, it will deal with rotation as well. Um, nice. Yeah, and things like that. All right, so, so selfie. You can do So you can do high resolution selfies, 24 megapixel selfies, okay? Nice. So that's kind of something that is not, it's not usually there. That's for that camera, but you also have a right here. Yeah, so there's also a five megapixel camera on here for things like Skype and, uh, and so calling. on. Yeah, so Skype and video calling. So if I pull up yeah. the camera, there's also a camera that you can rotate like this. So there's another camera here. That's a five megapixel. The, the yeah. standard uh, selfie cam. Yeah, the standard selfie cam, but the, the outside selfie cam is really high res. So we're very nice. pleased on that. So how exciting is it? How was this meetup you had in Japan, for example? And how is the yeah. excitement so on the, the internet? So we did a press launch and a meetup in Japan. We're very excited about uh, the... the uh, we're very excited about the launch. And, you know, we basically tried to get the software to be really sort of... Uh, uh, working well especially on the outside screen to really be working well uh for shipping to backers so that's it's been a big work right over the past been, year plus it's been, a, it's been a quite an interesting uh year yes but you know it's uh i think it's quite rewarding and also you know the team that was working on the ui they all went on holiday uh two weeks ago so uh uh, Mark, Igor, and Sebastian. So they all went uh, away on, on holiday, and uh, they well deserved holiday. I think. Are they on the beach? Maybe. Uh, I don't know about beach, but uh, they're 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 not in the office. Let's they're put it that way. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> and you have uh, those little flags right here. Do you have uh, like different ways to do print printouts? So, so we we have some fun stickers, and uh, these are some of the Croatian uh, uh, Croatian sort of checkered flag, but. Um, there, there's some. These are fun stickers. Um, we have some UK stickers. We have some UK flag stickers. We have some Croatian stickers. We have some, like stickers of birds and uh, eyes and some other fun stickers for the flames. So these fun stickers will be available uh, more, um, sort of more for promotional purposes. I think to to to, to users. So it's been uh, a fantastic couple of years already. Now. Uh, yeah, and, uh, how is it? It's how, how about meetings with huge telcos and yeah, we're meeting with telcos. We're in some ranging discussions for the telcos. Uh, we're talking to distributors. Um, we will have a backer meeting in London uh, before the end of the year. Uh, so hopefully near the uh, second half of November or very latest early December. So that's something to to uh, look out for, uh, so that people can. Um, see the units and of course they'll the backers we already have their units by the time we have the backer meeting so uh but just sort of to share some experiences etc and uh, hopefully get two millions of devices no you, you, you uh, have we'd love everything. to sell two million of devices at the moment we're still on thousands uh hopefully tens of thousands early next year but um it looks uh, like you have everything set up to change the the world it's even really more nice, than the first gen that's a really it's a really rounded product and this is what, you know, the, the Gemini was our first kind of launch into sort of pocket computing. This is really a great um, second generation product. It's a step up from the Gemini. Uh, and we really think that it's a highly usable device, both as a phone and as a little pocket computer. And everybody in the industry uh, knows that you are 
taking you seriously when they speak with you, right? Because they see you've you've delivered a, some amazing first gen and the second gen now, like, um, right? You're getting a, probably a lot of interesting discussions. Having a second device certainly means that you know people are taking us more seriously than having one device. So I think uh, that's important, and the fact that we've delivered a second device. I think it's also very important um, that you know we've consistently delivered two devices, both within uh, each each within a year of start of the project. So I think that's kind of uh, pretty good. So I'm a member on this really cool Facebook page. How about that? The the Gemini the Gemini yeah so so there's a, there's a few interesting uh, groups I think on the Facebook so yeah the the Gemini Facebook group is really. Uh, pretty pretty vibrant and of course I know that a lot of people are eagerly awaiting their devices so uh, you know thanks for everybody running that and also uh, you know we're, we know that uh, there's been quite a few active people in the community and um, I think you know it's it's really been a great support from the community right from the word go on the Cosmo uh, and and and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the Facebook group and uh, and support us from 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 the social media. I think it's yeah, really lots great. Yeah, lots of fans. Lots of fans. And I'm sure it's growing. Um, I think I've, I have a feeling it's growing. I'm really pleased that people like the device, and uh, I, I hope that they like the direction that we're going in. Of course, this is our second device. It's our 4G dual 4G device, and hopefully this uh, this will bring a lot of uh, fun and, and and happiness to a lot of people, uh, uh, enjoyment. And you know, obviously, we're we're looking at where to go next. But th at the moment, we're just focused on getting this absolutely right and getting it out the door and getting it to everybody by the end of the first week of November. So that's kind of the the plan.